Halo. This is the gut tube and body cavity embryology tutorial presented by the SHLDB with reference Landmark Medical Embryology by Thomson Sadler. So, in this chapter, we are going to start, <coughs> we are going to visualize the gut tube and body cavities, their formations based on their embryologic origins. So, <coughs> To start with, we are going to visualize um, the formation. This is this section like this is a transverse section through an embryo showing the various stages of closure of the gut tube and the ventral body walls. Is it clear? So as you can see, this is actually a transverse section. So now <clears throat> you need to know that um, the 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 embryo is having a trilaminal pattern. So there are three main layers. There is one layer which is above, which is the um, the ectoderm. Then there is one layer in the middle, which is called the mesoderm, and then there is one um, layer below, which is called the endoderm. <coughs> now, when the embryo grows, we need to know that what the ectoderm is going to encircle the amniotic fluid. So the ectoderm is going to um, is going to enclose the amniotic fluid, is it clear? And now you need to know that the um, the end of them is going to enclose the um, the yolk sac. So these are the two things that you have to know. So the egg to them is going to enclose the amniotic cavity and the end of them encloses the yolk sac. So at this stage you cannot actually visualize the, the embryo easily on, um, on, uh, on an ultrasound with an imaging technique. <coughs> So this is the, tri the initial trilaminal pattern that the embryo has. <coughs> so the egg to them is enclosing the um, the amniotic cavity as that, and the end of them is enclosing the yolk sac. And in the middle, we have the mesoderm. Now the mesoderm is going to be divided into two. The part which is closer to the centra is going to be called the paraxial mesoderm. Is it clear? So the paraxial mesoderm is the one which is closer to the center. So generally, you have to know that axial is the central part of the body and appendicular are the limbs or the lateral part of the body. Is it clear? So here is going to be the paraxial mesoderm. Now, and then the most laterally, you are going to have the lateral plate of the mesoderm. Now, in the middle between the paraxial mesoderm and the lateral plate of the mesoderm, you have the intermediate mesoderm. And inside the intermediate mesoderm, you have the intercellular cleft. Is it clear? <coughs> so, this image here, the diagram H, is at the level of the 19 day of conception of fertil after fertilization. Is it clear? 19 day of gestation. <coughs> now, <clears throat> the next diagram now is at the level when you are at the level of the 20 day 20 day of um, of conception of gestation so at the 20th day of, of gestation you realize that the end of them is going to get more in the center why the the egg to them gets more in the center toward the the central part to enclose the body cavity because at this level the embryo is not yet enclosed the embryo is having a neural plate at this level and the yolk sac be below here so it is trying to get enclosed in order to have um, um, um a, a, a circular body is it clear a solid body so the ectoderm is going to try to enclose such that it's going to contain both the mesoderm and the endoderm. So it's getting in more, is it clear? <coughs> so this is by the 20th day. Now, this is now by the 21st day of, um, of gestation. So by the 21st day of gestation, you see that it is getting more toward the endoderm, such as to enclose the body cavity. And then later, you realize that what this neural plate, which is located here, is going to get enclosed also so you are going to have this is going to is what is going to produce the central nervous system so you see the neural plate which is above here uh, which is produced by the ectoderm is going to separate to produce the up the, the the uppermost layer which is going to be the skin of the the back and then this line this one here in the center is the neural crest and the neural crest is going to contain um, is going to produce now um, um, the central nervous system, basically. <clears throat> 
So you see that this other part of the, the ectoderm, the ectoderm is going to get more in the center. Now you need to know that what the endoderm is still going to connect. So by this diagram, D is going to at the be at the level of the 24th day of gestation. So you see that the endoderm is connected slightly with the um the ectoderm this is the this is a connection between the the endoderm and the yolk sac externally is it clear so and then later on this diagram now is the die is the last diagram so this diagram is uh, at the level of so of the fourth week of gestation so when you're at the fourth week of gestation what happens is that the ectoderm is completely enclosed containing both the mesoderm and then the endoderm is it clear now you see that the yolk sac has been separated from the body but the yolk sac is still going to be is going to be connected with the endoderm at the level of the vitelline duct and the vitelline ducts at the level of the small intestine that's why if somebody has a disorder at the level of that connection of the vitelline dog is going to have made the maker diabetic colon is it clear? so that those are the points that you have to note here <clears throat> so this is the surface ectoderm here and the surface ectoderm is both um, um, enclosing the mesoderm and then you need to know that you see that this mesoderm which is the paraxial mesoderm is going to be connected at the level of the endoderm to form the dorsal mesentery then this mesoderm which is uh, which is closest to the ectoderm is going to produce a visceral uh, um, a mesoderm so that one is going to produce the visceral peritoneum and this is the parietal peritoneum so from here you realize that what this is going to be the core body of the embryo why this other part here that was enclosed you see, you see that this part now here is going to be the amniotic cavity and amniotic fluid at the first point the amniotic cavity and amniotic fluid was all enclosed by um was all enclosed by the 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 ectoderm is it clear? but later on you see that it the ectoderm is completely inside amniotic fluid is completely outside is it clear so that is the formation here <clears throat> Now the next one now this diagram is going to be showing now the um, the sagittal section or the longitudinal section. The upper diagram was showing the cross sectional view, but this now is showing the sagittal section for the development or the cephalocodal um, view for the development of both the gut tube and the body cavities. <clears throat> Now what you realize this is still your neural plate here with your ectoderm in blue. Is it clear? Now the mesoderm is in, is in red, and the mesoderm is also going to cover the amniotic cavity here. Also, this is going to be the mesoderm, which is going to entangle into the um, endoderm, covering both the the endoderm too. Is it clear? Now you see that um, this is at the level of um, of the seventeenth day. So this is the seventeenth day. So at the seventeenth day, what happened is that what the head is going to be um, the, the the neural crest, the the, the 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 neural plate is going to get forward and also get backward in order to enclose the body cavity. So it gets forward and backward. So these are the different structures. These are the, this is the androgenic cluster. This androgenic cluster is going to produce the heart letter. This is the oropharyngeal membrane. This membrane here, oropharyngeal membrane. This is the ectoderm, the endoderm, and these are music cavity, and this is the yoxa. And this letter in here, you see, you need to know that this is going to be the crackle membrane. And the crackle membrane is where um, both the urogenital sinus and the anus are going to be originating from, basically. So those are the parts you have to know. And then the last one now is the allantois. So Adam Toys is here. So later on, at the level of the 20, 22nd day of gestation, what happened is that it gets more inward. So when it gets more inward, here you are going to have the formation of also the foregut. Also the formation of the foregut and it's get, getting more inward, the formation of the pericardial cavity with the heart tube from the androgenic cell cluster. And this is also going to be the hind gut. So now at the level of the 24th day, it gets again more inward with the oropharyngeal membrane, the heart tube, and then this is going to be septum transversum. The septum, septum transversum is the, um, the, the, the structure that is going to result to the formation of the diaphragm as we are going to see later. 
so because this is still the chapter for the formation of the body cavity so you have a certain transmission that is going to be produced at the level of the 24th day of gestation which is directly inferior to the heart and is going to produce the diaphragm now we have now still the constriction is going to get more so it's going to enfold more and then you have now the oropharyngeal membrane is going to be produced more that oropharyngeal membrane is going to produce both the um the larynx and the the pharynx then you have the the the, um, the long bots which are also going to be produced by the end of them we have the foregut the midgut and the hindgut also from the end of them we have the liver body that is going to grow that is going to grow and then you have the alan toys that is going to come out here so as you can see so those are the different elements and this is at the level of the 28 day <clears throat> Now, the clinical correlation is that what you can have ventral body wall defects, is it clear? So, the ventral body wall defects can occur at the different parts of the body, it can occur at the thorax, it can occur at the abdomen, and it can occur at the pelvis, is it clear? When it's at the level of the thorax, you have what is called the ectopia cordis. When it's at the level of the abdomen, you can have gastrocystis or omphalocele. And when it's a, when it's at the level of the abdomen, you have gastrocystis. When it's at the level of the of the pelvis, you have the um, bladder or the cracker estrophy. Is it clear? <clears throat> so now let's start with ectopia cordis. What is ectopia cordis? So ectopia cordis um, is when the lateral body wall fails to close the middle of the thoracic region. So it results to the heart being outside of the thoracic cage. So the heart is not enclosed within the mesenchyme that is the risk the ribs and the muscle is going to be um, within the skin outside is it clear so sometimes the closure defect begin um codal end so now we need to know that what <clears throat> This ectopia cordis can also can also be in a spectrum of disease called the cantrell pentalogy. Is it clear? So that is the clinical correlation for ectopia cordis. So when they cut, the the heart is not enclosed. So so note also that the omphalocele may occur in the cantrell pentalogy are secondary to the body wall defects. So we have what is called the cantrell pentalogy. It is a spectrum that include of pentalogy is a pen that means that it contains five um five um, 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 components so it can consist of ectopia cordis it consists of defect in the anterior region of the diaphragm consists of absence of the pericardium consists of defect in the sternum and consists of abdominal wall defect such as omphalocele and gastro disease. So those are the cantrell petal pentalogy. It can occur um cantrell pentalogy can consist of ectopia cordis. So that the five main um, elements of the cantrell pentalogy. <clears throat> now the next thing to visualize still in the ventral body wall defect we have um gastro -sisis. So gastro -sisis occur when the body wall closure fail um, in the abdominal region. So when this body wall failure to close in the abdominal region is going to result to cantrell pentalogy. And then in cantrell pentalogy, what you have to note is that what is that the um, the the bowels are going to be exposed free outside the the abdomen. They are exposed free outside the abdomen. Why in omphalo? That's the main difference between gastrocystis and omphalo cell. Now omphalo cell is more of a hernia than a, um, an abdominal wall defect is this clear in abdominal wall defect the abdomen is the abdomen is failing to close so the intestine are going to be exposed outside why in omphalocele omphalocele is more a herniation of the abdominal content through the um, through the, the, the umbilical cord so when you have a herniation of the uh, of the abdominal content as a bowel through the umbilical cord, it's going to the, the that's what umphalos is going to be inside is the the abdomen the, the bowels are going to be enclosed inside a membranous sheet that is a a what the water jelly of the the umbilical cord is it clear? So those are the points that you have to note here. So the next element you have the bladder, the crack, the cracker extrophy. So for the bladder and the cracker extrophy, you need to know that there is an abnormal body wall closure defect in the pelvic region. So the bladder extrophy represents a less severe defect. So when you have bladder extrophy, it's less severe. Why? Because only the bladder 
is um, is not there's an it's a defect in pelvic wall closure so only the bladder is exposed in abdo in bladder atrophy is it clear now in quaker quaker atrophy result from a more severe uh, uh, failure of the body wall such that the bladder the rectum and the other pelvic organ you have the bladder the rectum the uterus in females on the or the prostate in males are going to be exposed outside is it clear now this is this are images what well, this image can show you an ectopia causes is it clear and a form of um, um phallocere. Yeah, this one is a gastrocesis gastrocesis why because the abdominal the abdominal content as the bowels are not enclosed within the membrane this is bladder extrophy so the penis is also having epispadia so you need to know that bladder estrophy can be associated with epispadia on this penis is it clear and you also have ovarian disorder or even testicular disorder such as cryptoshidism when the testicle testicle uh, the 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 um the testicles do not descend appropriately and this one here is a more severe form of bladder of a um, of a um, pelvic wall um this defect that comes that is called a um, cracker dystrophy cracker um extrophy where you can see the blood i can see the rectum and you can see other structures there <clears throat> now the other bladder um, 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 body wall defect which is not actually a body wall defect is going to be called on phallocer and on phallocer represents a, a eventual body wall defect but it does not arise from failure of body wall closure it is more of a herniation that's why it's called a physiologic umbilical herniation as you can see the abdominal walls are going to herniate through the umbilical cord and it's also is going to be covered by a membrane called the amnion so this one is covered by a membrane contrary to what is above there which is not covered by a membrane and this one is called omphalosome <clears throat> now this now is the image they are the images that are going to show the production of the, the, the formation of the diaphragm musically so um, this drawing here at uh, the ventral view of the embryo at the 24th day so this one is at the 24th day so here you see that what in the formation of the diaphragm this is the primitive pericardial cavity consisting of the heart tube is it clear now underneath that primitive pericardia to be going to have the septum transversal which is going to be derivative of the diaphragm so and this is the anterior intestinal portal is it clear this is now the lateral body wall so now as you see the body is going to try to close anteriorly both at the cranial and neural fold and this is also the abdominal fold the body wall fold is going to try to close as it's closing this the diaphragm is also forming so this diagram here, diagram B now is going to be at the five foot gestation. That five foot gestation you need to know that one needs to know that um, the the um, the septum transversum is going to have two main parts. Two main parts are going to be derived. At, at this level, the septum transversum is going to be formed for having two main parts. It is going to have a more fibrous part and it's going to have also a more uh, muscular part. So there's going to be a fusion between the missing kind of the of the 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 septum transversum and the and the endodem so all this is going to produce now the um the fibrous part of the septum and then the muscular part of the septum which is lateral and underneath the septum you're going to have the liver cord is it clear so those are the points that you have to note here so the septum so certain structures are going to pass through the septum and those structures can be seen from anterior to posterior so the first structure which is going to pass which is the uppermost structure to pass is going and, and is the uppermost structure is going to be the inferior vena cover then the next structure after it is going to be the esophagus so the four cord here you have the esophagus and then the most posterior structure to pass through the septum to the septum transversal is going to be the outer and all this the outer and the inferior vena cover are connected to the are going to be connected to the heart tube is it clear so now um this are the, this is now the vitiline dog which is produced when it's going to be the anterior wall closure and this is a cracker which is going to be produced when there's a pelvic wall closure now the allantois now is going to be a connection between the um the bladder and then the um the umbilical cord there's going to be a small collection a connection that is at this level between the bladder and umbilical cord this is why you can have a pathology of allantois which can occur later 
en la pathologie au verre l'an de jour pour l'état quand il est pis pas dire il est clair so i'm going to speak about that more later now the next one now is this diagram this diagram is the growth of the long board in the peri cardio peritoneal canal so you see that what the long boards see they are yellowish white because they originate from the end of the music layer. so you need to know that what you need to point out the fact that everything in the body that has a small form of air anything that contains air in the body anything any structure that is tube like or contain can contain air in the body is made up is made from the primordially from the end of them that's the main yeah. point that you have to not in put in your mind any structure in the body that has air or tubes um tube like um, substances in the body is it is made up from the end of them so just like the lungs so the lungs the, all these those are usually all those bronchi and all that are produced from the end of them so that's why and now the mesenchymal part you see that this reddish part shows the mesenchymal part from the midst of them so the midst of them is going to also attach to produce now the blood vessels the connective tissues and all the lung parenchyma that we see later in life is it clear so this is why we have missing chemical tissue here now this is the pleural peri um, cardiac fold you see that one initially the lungs were posterior are you seeing so initially when you had this embryo the, the initial the, the, the uh, embryologic form the lungs were posterior and then the missing kind are attached to it. Now, as the lungs are growing, so you see that what the missing kind are engulfing through the long butts, and the long bottom produce from the end of them. So the missing kind and the long bot are going to fuse together and they are going to more move anterior and the heart is going to more move posterior. You're going to see that in later diagrams. So these are the diagrams which show what I'm just explaining. So in this transformation, what do you realize? You realize that what? So the mesenchymal, the, the, the mesenchymal, but as the on them, is using more with the end of them, that is the long bot, to produce now the lungs. Is it clear? Now, this fold that was located here was the pleural, which is between the pleural, because this um, part which is cool, which is in contact with the lungs, is going to be the visceral, Plural. Why this part which is not in contact directly with the lungs, most of them is the parietal pleural. Now it's going to come more anteriorly as you can see here. So the visceral pleural is going to, it has fused more while the parietal pleural layer is outside. And this is the pleural pericardial fold which is between the parietal pleural and then the pericardial membrane. Is it clear? So now we see that this is these are the different things now the second the next thing now is that um the ribs are also going to be produced posteriorly here so when the ribs are produced um they are going to extend anteriorly and the lungs also with the peri the visceral and the parietal pleural are going to extend why the heart is going to try to move posteriorly that's why we have the distribution now in the later time later life. now this is the development of the diaphragm <coughs> So in the development of the diaphragm, we have the pleural pericardial fold, the pleural peritoneal fold. With the pleural peritoneal fold is a fold both connecting the pleura and the peritoneum. So this is the um, pleural peritoneal fold. This is the septum transverse somewhere. You need to know that initially the thorax, when you are in biology form, the thorax and the abdomen are connected together, is it clear? But the more you are growing in the embryologic phase, they get the, 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 the more the, the, the diaphragm is separating um, the, the, the thorax and the abdomen, is it clear? So at the beginning, the septum was just anterior, yes. So this is the, and the septum transversal, which was just anterior. Now, this is the pleural peritoneal fold, the fold that is produced between the pleura and then the peritoneum so that's the pleural peritoneal fold so the and this is now is a pleural pericardial fold so the septum transversum that is the primordial form of the the diaphragm was only anterior so posteriorly the the, the body is not actually uh, 
um, is not actually separated it was not actually separated that's why when you have a diaphragmatic hernia the structures are more passing posteriorly is it clear than anteriorly is it clear so you see this food so the now this this um, grows the more they grow now you have now um the pleural pega the pleural um, um parita food that grow more to cover and to extend to close this more this is the pleural peritoneal membrane so the pleural peritoneal membrane is going to close more while the certain transversum close the anterior part and then laterally now you have the muscular body wall which is going to close that's why laterally it is the diaphragm is going to be more muscular now this anterior part is more fibrous because it is made up of the septum transversum while this middle posterior part is more membranous because it's made up of the pleural peritoneal membrane now you see that this space which is more membranous is the most fragile part of the diaphragm that's why when you have a diaphragmatic hernia it passes through this position here and then this orientation of the different structure that can easily pass through the diaphragm the anterior part here you have the inferior um, vena cava which is the most superior then the second year is the um, the esophagus, which is the next one, and then in the posterior one here is the aorta, which is the most inferior. Now, the clinical correlation here <coughs> is the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. It is one of the most common malformations in newborns. That is, one in two thousand children are going to have congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So, in congenital diaphragmatic hernia, you need to know that it mostly occurs on the left than the right. Is it clear? So here um, you see there is an opening. So this is the opening of a supergos opening of the inferior vena cava and this is the opening for the outer the outer hiatus. Now this is the absence. When you have the absence of the pleural peritoneal membrane now, you see that you are, you are going to have a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. That absence usually occur on the left than the right. So the the, the abdominal contents that are the gut is that is the gut is going to extend now into the lungs when it extends to the lungs now it can compress now the lungs and cause a pulmonary hypoplasia is this clear so we are going to have a parasterna hiatus so <clears throat> So the, the the another type of hernia that you can have if you don't have you can have parasternal hernia so it is another hernia uh, so this this is the abdominal viscera in the chest is going to push the heart and cause the lung to be hypoplastic a large defect is going to be associated with high rate of mortality and hypoplasia now occasionally a small part of muscular fiber of the diaphragm fail to develop and the hernia may remain undiscovered in the child and that form of, of, of of diaphragmatic hernia is going to be called a parasternal hernia. Now you can also have another hernia, which is also fragile hernia, where this hole, which is still at the level of the of the pleural peritoneal membrane, is going to be very large. So the how the lungs can also herniate here. So when the patient has this esophageal hernia, he can easily re, he can easily have gastroesophageal reflux disease. Is it clear? So this was generally what was what is to be seen under and body cavity formation for me you say thanks for your kind of attention don't forget to like and subscribe for our channel thanks very much